Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to visualize objects in the 3D world. Now, one thing you may want to do is change the display settings of the 3D world, and I'll show you how to do that now. So what you need to do is click the File tab to go backstage, and then on the navigation pane, click Options. So notice you have General Options and Display Options. So underneath Floor Display Options, notice you can change the background color of the 3D world. You can turn on or off the floor and the grid. You can change the color of the floor or the grid lines. You can resize the floor based on where components are in the 3D world. Or you can show the 3D world origin as a frame. Now let's go and make some changes. So notice I'm not showing the grid right now in the 3D world, so I'll select the grid visibility checkbox here. And to save my work, I'm going to go down to the bottom right corner and click OK. Now if you make a change and you don't want to save your work, you can click the cancel button here. Or click the go back arrow that's at the top of the navigation pane. But in this case, I want to show the grid in the 3D world, so I'll click OK to save my work. And notice here are the grid lines. Now another display option that may affect the visualization of objects is the floor reflection of light. And I'll show you how to make that change now. So I'll click the file tab to go backstage, click options, click display, and there's that property floor reflection. So this scales the amount of light that can be reflected off the floor, so it affects its shininess. So let's actually move this up to say 0.20. And we want to save the change, so I'll go down here and click OK. And notice now these objects, there's a global light source, so the light's bouncing off the objects, it hits the floor, and notice we have this reflection here of the objects. Now, in, in most cases, you probably don't want to see this or the grid lines, it just depends on how you want to work. So actually, we'll turn off the grid and the floor reflection. So I'll go back to the File tab, click Options, click Display, and clear that grid visibility checkbox, and set my floor reflection back to zero. So to save my work, Remember, click OK, and the changes are good to go. Now for the remainder of this video, I'm going to talk about the 3D World toolbar, which you can see here on the side of the viewport. So notice the first two commands, we have All and Fill selected. So this controls the camera of the 3D World. So if I actually move the camera around and get lost in the 3D World, or just go somewhere and I want to quickly recenter my view on everything, just click the All command, like so. So once again, you may zoom in too far at one object, you want to zoom all the way back and get a view of everything, just click the Alt command and notice the shortcut is Control F, so I actually will press the Control key and the F key and I filled my view. Now in some cases you may want to center your view on something that's selected, so I actually will just directly select this black cube here, and I want to fill or center my view on this object, so I'll go here and click Fill Selected, and now that object is within my view. Now how does this work when you have multiple components selected? Well, let's see. Let's say we add the red box to our selection. So I'll hold on the control key and click the red box. Now, since this is the last object selected, notice what happens. I'll click Fill Selected, and now my view is centered on the last component I added to the selection, or the last component I selected. So now if I hold on the control key and clear the red box from the selection, I still have that black cube selected. So if I go back to the 3D World toolbar and click Fill Selected, notice it's now centered on the last object that's selected. The next command of the toolbar is the headlight. So this is a light that points directly from the camera and it's always facing your view. So you never see any dark spots in the 3D world because there's a global light source that shines down on everything. And when I rotate my view, notice you get these shadings and you know the backs of some components may be dark. So when you're programming a robot or you need to see the edges more, go ahead and turn on the headlight. So I uh, will click this toggle here to turn on the headlight. It points from the camera. And notice when I move the camera, it's always bright at what I'm seeing. So you always will have light and you can see what you want to see, like so. So let's actually turn the headlight off. We don't need that right now. Now the next command is the projection of the 3D world, or objects. So by default we use perspective projection. So if I actually move this cube all the way back, so I'll use the move tool. And let's actually move it along that X, Y plane. So I move the cube all the way back there. And notice these objects up front, they appear closer or larger because they're closer to the camera. Whereas this blue cube back here, you know, it looks smaller because it's further away from the camera or my view. Now, if you want to use orthographic projection, notice what happens. So I'll go here to the 3D World toolbar, click orthographic to turn it on, and notice all lines are parallel now with the projection, so everything is scaled properly. And notice that the size of the blue cube is the same size as all these other objects as well. So if I interact with this, you can see the difference. So this is orthographic, but by default we use perspective. So the objects that are closer to the camera appear larger, objects that are farther away appear smaller. 
Now, usually you use orthographic projection when you're making drawings, and in some cases people want to use orthographic projection when they're modeling a component, so it's up to you to decide which view you prefer. The next command in the 3D World toolbar is your render mode, and this actually affects how the components are visualized in the 3D World directly, so it's about, you know, do you see lines, edges, do you see solid surfaces, and so forth. Now, to see how this really works out, I'm going to clear the layout and load a different layout in the 3D World, so I'll click the File tab, and on the Navigation pane, I'll click Clear All. I'm not going to save anything. And now in my eCatalog panel, I'll click All Models. And I'll go down here to the Components check uh, Filter, and I'll clear the Components checkbox. So I'm just displaying layouts that are in my eCatalog panel. And I'll load this first layout here called 15x axis old. So I just double click the item to load in the 3D world. And there's the layout. Now to change the rendering mode, let's see how these look. So by default, we use a shaded mode, but you can turn on wireframe. So now you're just seeing all the wires, like so. Let's see the other modes. So let's use all edges shaded. So notice we still see a bit of the wires, but now we have the edges that are shaded with the material. Let's now use a different mode of face edges shaded. So now we're seeing the faces that are made by the connecting lines, and they're shaded as well. So this is actually one view I prefer uh, sometimes to use when I'm modeling or building a layout. And let's see the other rendering modes. So we have this X-ray shaded. This is kind of cool. So it's actually a ghost rendering shading, so you actually can see through objects. So notice when I look at the robot or through a wall, I can see the robot, the positioner, and the wall behind it as well using X-ray. The next rendering mode is shaded, which is the one we use by default. Next mode is material shaded. So this is taking the light properties from the material and rendering them in the 3D world. So you can see you get a bit more accuracy of what the objects will look like. So next, use the realistic shaded mode. Notice you get some shadow effects there and some ambient occlusion. So use the next rendering mode of realistic edge shaded. And notice this just highlights the edges that are in the components, so you can see those crisp, clear edges. Ooh, look at that. Yes. Now it's up to you to decide what rendering mode you prefer. Um, I usually use the realistic shaded mode, like you can see here, when I'm making images or presenting something. But most of the time, I just use shaded, and that's what I can see. You may also want to change rendering mode when you're exporting images, so I'll show you how that works. I'll go here to the export group and click image. Notice that anything that's within this red boundary frame will be captured in the image, but you know any uh, tools that are displayed in the 3D world, such as this toolbar or the view selector or the simulation controls, those are just layers, so they're not included in the exported image, just so you know. And notice over here in the export image task pane, I have the rendering mode I can use to change for the image I want to export, so I can change it to X-ray. You notice you get a preview of that in the 3D world, but if I click close, notice I'm just I'm back to my normal rendering mode that I have. Now the next command is for how you visualize frames in the 3D world, which are points of reference or coordinate systems. So notice you can visualize robot base frames or coordinate systems. You can visualize uh, tool center points or tool frames. You can visualize the robot world frame in the robot, which is either at its base or in its belly, depending on the robot model. You can visualize robot positions, which by default that's turned on. And you can also show other types of frame features in the 3D world. So I've actually select the frames checkbox here. Notice we can now see more indications of points of reference. So we have all these frames throughout the wall, in the robot, and on the workpiece positioner. Let's actually change and turn those frames off. And let's actually select the robot to see about the robot position. So I'll click the program tab, and I'll use the jog command to select the robot. And notice its program is empty, so actually we'll just really quickly teach some positions like so. So let's make that a position. Teach another position. And teach another position over here. That looks good. So notice I'm getting an indication in the 3D world where those positions are. And they're labeled. So we have P1 there. And actually P1 is there, sorry. And there's P2. Now if you want to visualize these robot positions differently, you can go down here to the 3D world toolbar. Notice you have the position frame display options for those robot positions. So I can turn off the labels. Notice I no longer see P1 or P2 in the 3D world, but I do see the coordinate axis and the black dot. But I can change this to turn off those axes and also the center points. But I'll actually turn them back on. So now I see the center points, the Z axis of the position, the Y axis, the X axis, and the label, like so. Now the last thing I want to talk about before ending the video is the material and visibility of objects in the 3D world. So by default, all components have a material property, 
and a visibility property. So the material property defines what material is in the component. So if I actually go back to the Home tab to configure my components, you notice I have the robot selected, and it has this material property here in the component properties panel set to white. Now other parts of the robot are different colors. That's because the features or the geometry in the robot, you know, has its own material definition. Whereas this material property in the component, you know, is for globally or affects any geometry or features in the component that don't have an assigned material. So if I change it from white to, I'm in the mood for pink. So let's use pink. And notice, you know, the parts of the robot that were not assigned to material at the feature level now have that global material assigned to them in the component. So most of the robot is pink and this part is still, you know, mustard or orange. Now with the visible property, you can notice here, this actually controls the visibility of the whole component in the 3D world. So right now it's selected so I can see the robot, but if I clear that checkbox, you know, you cannot see the robot in the 3D world. Now you run into a problem here because how do you know if you have the robot selected or not? And how can I directly select it in the 3D world? Well, you can't because you can't see anything. Now if you ever get in that type of situation, what you can do is you can go here to the cell graph panel, and this will actually will display all the components in the 3D world. So there's quite a lot of components in this layout, so I actually will collapse some of these categories. And notice here I have a category of robot, and we can see an indication here that the visibility of the robot is turned off. You know, the eye has a slash through it. So if I actually click the eye to remove the slash, notice the robot is now visible in the 3D world, and I can select it. So if I actually turn off the visibility again, and I select another component, I can still select the component directly here in the cell graph panel, and I can either, you know, show or hide the object in the 3D world, I can lock it from its properties being edited, or I can just select the object and change the properties however I want to in the component properties panel. All right, this concludes the video. Now I covered a lot of information, so if you need to rewatch parts of the video, or you can ask questions on our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com, or you can open your help file for the 3D software, go to the Getting Started How It Works section, and just click the topic called Visualization. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank <laughs> you.